Good afternoon. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Steve Fowles, the commander of the Sunday American Legion, Squadron 294, Morissette Post. It's my privilege to welcome you today to this Memorial Day commemoration of Squadron Flag for Veterans here in Fort Square. As many of you are aware, since our last Memorial Day ceremony, the Suns have lost two honored commanders, Paul Moody and Joseph Rill. We thank them and their families for their dedication and service to the Sunday the American Legion. The flags and the bricks on this island represent those who have served and are still serving, and for those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to keep us free. Always remember, if there were no veterans, there would be no America. Freedom is not free. Thank you. God bless you. God bless our troops. God bless our veterans, and God bless the United States of America. And now I am pleased to turn over the microphone to our Master of Ceremonies Squadron Finance Officer, Guy Ferris. Thank you, Commander. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this Memorial Day commemoration in a bit of heat. It honors our nation's heroes who have sacrificed it all to safeguard our liberties. As a dual member of both the Suns and the Morissette Post, I am honored to help bring this ceremony to you. The invocation will be by our squadron chaplain, Don Knight. Uncover. Uncover. Thank you, Guy. Welcome, everyone. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. On this Memorial Day, we come to remember those who bravely served our great country, and as a result of their service, were called home by the Divine Commander. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the souls of those good men and women who gave their last breath in defense of our nation, our freedom, and our children's future. We also ask you to bless everyone gathered here today and grant us the strength to rise to the challenges of our times and meet them in full faith that you will always be with us. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, George. Go ahead. To lead us in our national anthem today is longtime Squadron 294 member Bill Daly. Sergeant at Arms. Yes, sir. Bring the troop to attention and present arms. Troops, attention. Present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, all but veterans, please remove your hats. Veterans, hand salute. Harry, oh, say. Can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight of the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave of the land and of the free and the home of the brave. Sergeant Arms, bring the troops to parade rest. We're always honored on these occasions to be joined by our elected officials, and we are very glad today to honor our most supportive champion of veterans anywhere, our Mayor, the Honorable Thomas P. Koch. Mr. Mayor, please.
Thank you, Guy, Commander, distinguished veterans, friends all. It's certainly an honor and privilege to be with you today and bring the greetings of the city uh, to what's become a, a wonderful annual event here at Fort Square. And certainly uh, a special, special hello to Karen Modi. Uh, we know that this was a labor of love for Paul, which became a labor of love for Karen. Uh, the two of them really worked side by side for so long. So, uh, and I, know, I don't know if Terry Brill is here, but I was certainly mindful of the contributions Paul Moody made, not only this island, but his time with the city of Quincy and Joe Brill, all his time on the Park and Recreation Board. And we will be doing something later to honor both of them in relation to this island. So uh, good to see you, Karen. Um, I just, a uh, couple of words. I couldn't help but uh, think of the contrast I saw an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal a couple of months ago, and they were speaking about the fragility of democracy. In fact, I think it was John Adams that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, he made the quote at one time, every democracy over time commits suicide. You know, what did he mean by that? And then I saw that op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal, and it spoke about how our young people in high school were debating pronouns. And if you go over to the Ukraine, the young people were filling sandbags and making Molotov cocktails to defend the democracy before they fled, leaving their brothers and fathers to do the same. So let us be mindful of the sacrifice for democracy. Uh, I think a large degree in this country today, we take so much for granted. And you don't have to look too far, uh, whether it's at this island of flags, memorials all over the city, the cemeteries in the city, to see the contributions made time and time again, the lives that have given Eliza was sacrificed over and over to defend this, this democracy. And I certainly hope that our founding fathers would be proud of that democracy. And hopefully, as a nation, we can come through the challenges we're facing and find some common ground on those common values that bring us together as Americans. So uh, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you to our veterans. May God continue to bless the men and women serving all across the world as we're here today keeping the peace. God bless. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We have a couple other guests. I see Senator Keenan is here, and uh, City Councilman Noel DeBona, and past Sheriff Bellotti. No, there you are. <laughs> Treasurer Bellotti. Yes, sir. All right. That, I think that covers it. If not, I'm an idiot. All right, let's uh, let's go on. Squadron 294 is very proud to be part of the storied Cyril P. Morissette Post 294 of the American Legion. Representing the post today is the current commander and dual member of Squadron 294, George Bouchard. Commander. Thank you, Guy. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for having me here. It's a pleasure and honor to be here each year uh, for the Suns. Uh, they do a wonderful job here. As you know, on Memorial Day, we have the ceremony here. Reminds us of the men and women who we have lost, who have gone before us. And on Veterans Day, they do this all over again in remembrance of the men and women who serve this great nation. So I applaud the Sons of the American Legion for taking part in these two ceremonies each and every year. Today I remember Paul, Commander Paul Moody, and Commander Joe Brill, and my two brothers who have flags here. That's who I remember. Each flag behind me, roughly 400, and about 650 bricks behind me, all represent a certain individual. On these bricks and flags are names. It's not just names, it's stories and memories. So people throughout the year come here to look for their loved ones and remember those stories and it reminds them of who they lost. So thank you to the Sons for doing this each year. Uh, I want to thank the, uh, the Sons of the American Legion. We, we are very lucky at the Morissette to have the family we have. With our ladies auxiliary who step up whenever we need them, and the Sons to have ceremonies like this throughout the year. So thank you to all of them. Commander Stephen Fowles, past Commander Steve Dunley, Robert Adams, and Mr. Guy Ferris, thank you for all you do at this island to beautify it. So God bless each and every one of you. God bless the beautiful city of Quincy, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Just a couple other people recognized very quickly. District 6 Commander of the American Legion, Bobby Jordan. 
Past Commander of the Post 294, Bob Lewis, and anybody else who's important. <laughs> National <laughs> Department Commander, uh, thank you, Mr. Bosworth, for coming, and Quincy Access TV, we appreciate it. Uh, past Commander of the Department of Massachusetts and of the Post, Fred White, is on uh, COVID protocol and couldn't be here. Our guest speaker today is the Director of Quincy Veteran Services and a veteran of the United States Navy. Christine Cugina, Cugini was born and raised in Brookline, Mass. She's one of six children. Christine joined the Navy at 17 after graduating from Brookline High School. In October of 1987, Christine left her home and family and went to Navy boot camp in Orlando, Florida. After completing training, she reported to USS Yellowstone AD-41, a destroyer tender out of Norfolk, Virginia. In August of 1990, the USS Yellowstone left Norfolk on a scheduled six-month Mediterranean cruise. Just day before she was set to leave, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. This changed the schedule and the responsibility for the USS Yellowstone and ultimately extended the scheduled six-month cruise. The USS Yellowstone was later mentioned by President George H.W. Bush as being the first naval command in a combat zone to have women serving on board. Christine left active duty in 1991 and returned home to Brookline, Mass. She joined the Navy Reserves and was stationed at the Naval Reserve Center, Quincy, Mass. In 1997, Christine and her family moved to Quincy. Christine and her husband, John, raised thir three children, Mark, Colleen, and Megan in Quincy, with two graduating from Quincy High and one currently attending Quincy High. Go Presidents. Christine's civilian career was spent at two Boston hospitals. It was while she was working at Mass General, she was introduced and learned about the home base program and began volunteering for many of their events. It was while she was working at Mass General, she realized that working with and supporting veterans is what she wanted to do. In 2017, Christine traveled to Arlington National Cemetery to participate in National Wreaths Across America Day. On that trip, she researched how to bring Wreaths Across America to Quincy. In 2018, Christine organized the Wreaths Across America program for the city of Quincy, where the families of our fallen and the community can come together to remember and honor our deceased veterans and teach the children of the importance of freedom. This program has grown each year locally and nationally, and 2022 will be Quincy's fifth year participating. In March of 2020, Christine was hired as the Administrative Secretary in the City of Quincy Veterans Services Department, and then in January of 2022, Christine was sworn in as the Director of Veterans Services, Services for the City of Quincy. Director? I promise I'm not going to read my whole speech because I know how long, uh, how hot it is outside for everyone. So take a sip of water now and just bear with, uh, bear with me and bear with the heat. Thank you all for coming out today and thank you to the Sons for inviting me to speak. Mayor Koch, city officials, state officials, thank you. Veterans and friends, thank you. When Commander Fowles asked me if I would speak today, I was honored and surprised, and then at the same time I thought to myself, why me? <laughs> what can I say that is different, new, or thought-provoking? I'm a proud United States Navy veteran, and before I go any further, let me say thank you for your service to my fellow veterans. I stand here before you, and I know I'm surrounded by friends. Memorial Day is one day on the calendar but I'm sure all of us think of our late veterans, brothers and sisters, our family members, our loved ones, each day throughout the year. We should encourage others to remember and honor the men and women who served before us and are no longer here to share their stories. Small gestures to remember and honor our nation's heroes throughout the year would mean so much to so many. The casualties of war are not only those who died in battle, but are also the families they left behind. We mourn the loss. We should celebrate their life and the privilege we have of knowing men and women like them. Memorial Day for some is a long weekend before summer, cookouts, the beach, family gatherings, to others, it is a visit to the cemetery, possibly a ceremony, a parade, and that it might even be a day better spent alone. As veterans, you may feel guilty that you made it home, and you know that not everyone did. This is a common feeling amongst veterans, 
the effects of war are not always visible to the eye and they are not always seen immediately. As a veteran community, we need to continue to honor their memory, share their story, and say their name. A quote that some of you have heard me say before is one that has stayed with me from the very first time I heard it. It has been said a person dies twice, once when they take their final breath, and later the last time their name is spoken. I believe in those words. With honor and pride, let us remember them all. We must continue to share their stories and remember what they sacrificed for the rest of us because few men and women choose to put their lives on the line to serve their country and defend the Constitution. Few volunteer to serve knowing that death may, become, may be the outcome. Together, we can ensure that those who make this choice and make the ultimate sacrifice can rest easy knowing that they served with the thanks of a grateful nation and knowing that they will never be forgotten. Guy was kind enough to read my bio and share my story. Today I'm here with you to remember our fallen heroes. You may be a parent, a spouse, a sibling, a child, a grandchild, a friend. We are here together to honor and remember them all. Let us take a moment to say a special prayer for the men and women from our own veteran community who, lost the, who we lost this past year, and also to, to the two very special men who worked tirelessly to make this island an island of remembrance, honor, and beauty, Mr. Paul Moody and Mr. Joseph Brill. And to Karen and Terry, please know that they will never be forgotten. If you know me, or you can tell by now, public speaking is not my strength. So I thought the best thing I can do was share with you a little of what motivates me to continue to work and be a part of the veterans community, a community larger than life, and a community built of men and women who served and their families. Our love for our country has not changed, but our mission has changed just, just a little since our military days. But the importance of working together has not. I ask you today to please stay involved, be present, and remember why you joined the military and the veterans organizations that you represent today. We have to keep working together, helping each other, and sharing and celebrating in the accolades that each one has. As I come to the end, I have to, let's remember the POW MIAs as we continue to honor those who held captive and returned, as well as those who remain missing from past conflicts. To our Gold Star families, it is with heartfelt gratitude for your sacrifice and with deep respect for your loss you suffered that we pray with you and we pray for you. This is an honor that no one wants. Please know that your loved ones, our comrades, will never be forgotten. We will remember them all. Thank you to the Sons of the American Legion. Thank you to all of you and God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Sergeant at Arms. Yes, sir. Please escort Director Cugini and Officer of the Day Dunley to place a memorial wreath at the base of the flagpole to honor all members of the Armed Forces of the United States of America who gave their lives in service to their country. The poem in Flanders Fields has come to embody the spirit of Memorial Day all around the world. It will be recited in every English-speaking country at least next Monday. 
In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place. And in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Following the sellout of 400 flags for this island, each of which was purchased to honor a particular person, we start our veterans brick, brick program. Since its inception, over 650 bricks with the name, rank, and branch of service for each veteran, as inscribed by Quincy's own Monte Granite Company, have been installed alongside this walkway, around the flagpole, and more recently in our new patio area at the lower end of the island. The effort that goes into making this island such a special place almost cannot be measured. From its founding by our late long-term commander, Paul Moody, as always aided by his wife, Karen, and her Quincy High class of 1966 schoolmates, through the work of all our officers and members down through the years, the irreplaceable work of our many individual volunteers and organizations. Most recently, following the city's makeover that resulted from an unfortunate auto incident, we got some extra help with beautification, both here and at the Morissette Post itself. Those generous benefactors are the Houseneck Garden Club and the Home Depot. Also, the bottled water we are enjoying today is courtesy of our neighbor over the hill, Star Market. Officer of the day. Sir. Sure. Report for roll call of the deceased. Sir. In these ceremonies, we only read aloud the names of our comrades or others with ties to the Morissette Post or Squadron 294 who have passed away in the past year. Response to all is absent. Past Squadron Commander 294, Commander Paul Moody. Absent. Past Squadron 294, jo Commander Joe Brill. Absent. Past 294, Member Philip Murphy. Absent. Past 294, Member John T. Quinn. Absent. Post Benefactor Anthony McConnell. Absent. Dismiss. We are grateful to all of our Quincy veterans with their friends and families and guests who have honored us today, including our comrades from other Morissette posts and other posts. Commandant Mark is here from the uh, Marine Corps, the Caddy Detachment Marine Corps League, by the way, I forgot him. The Combined Color Guard of the Morissette Post, Quincy's Fire Department Color Guard, the Honor Guard of the North Quincy High School Air Force Junior ROTC Unit 841, under the command and direction of Master Sergeant John DiLorenzo, and to the Lenoc Honor Society of Massachusetts, all Marine Corps veterans for their firing detail and bugler. We're also grateful for the assistance of the Quincy City Departments who aid our programs all year round. The Mayor's Office, the City Council, Police, Fire and Public Works and Parks. Please refer to the last page of your printed program for other thanks. But we're most grateful to all of you. Thank you for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Mr. Stephen Sweet will perform the beautiful hymn Amazing Grace on the bagpipes in memory of our deceased heroes. The troop will remain at present arms. Sergeant at arms. Sure. To honor all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, as a firing detail, fire a volley. Detail, prepare to fire the volley. Heroes, the Negroes are
now sound taps in echo. Bugler, sound taps. Reason! Ah! Sergeant at arms. Sir. Bring the troops to order arms. Troops. Order. Um. The chaplain will offer benediction. On cover. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us together at this Memorial Day celebration to acknowledge the debt we owe the men and women of the United States military who have guarded this country with their lives. We especially honor those who lost their lives while defending this nation. They fought on land, at sea, and in the air, always understanding that they may not come back from the mission and accepting that as part of the job. They were willing to risk death to protect this land we hold so dear and the American people along with it. We thank them for the sacrifice and promise will carry on their legacy to ensure they did not die in vain. Lord, hear our prayer. Cover. As we are about to close these proceedings, we invite you all to join us afterwards for some refreshments at the Morissette Post at 81 Liberty Street in Quincy. Sergeant at Arms, Sir. dismiss the troop. Troops, dismiss. <laughs>